and look what is going on. We have a lock. Now, that doesn't mean we're gonna get eggs, but I've never even seen them lock before, ever. Ah, the weather has warmed up here in Cape Coral, Florida. The goats are drinking out of the river in my backyard. All is well. And we're here to check on the Owl of Pythons. What's up guys, Dave Palumbo here and I have got a beautiful super hypo Burmese Python female that is growing and she's, she's gonna be going to a six foot cage pretty soon. She's so big now. Uh, it's time to move her up from this four footer. And I, I, you know me, I love white snakes. This is a black eyed leucistic. Two copies of the hypo gene. She's also granite because all the babies in this litter that I produced were granite. And she's a sweetheart. And you know, it's great that I have the opportunity to still have berms here in Florida because a lot of people don't have that ability. I have an education permit, as you guys know. I can't breed them, but you know, I could enjoy them. And you know what? The truth of the matter is they're really big snakes. I have six of them uh, that's on my permit, so I don't need any more. And any more than that is, is, is a lot of work. So what I'm doing is I'm just really, you know, enjoying the ones I have. I picked all the ones out that I wanted to keep and that I would ever want. Obviously, there's always new morphs coming around I'm, well, I'll never be able to get, but uh, get how to have a white berm, right? So there she is. And, you know, the great thing about these uh, snakes is that they're big snakes, but they have really good personalities. I find that the albinos and the uh, leucistics are usually much more mellow. And I don't know if that's because, you know, of just being a genetic variation, you know, that's further away from the wild type or what, but I just noticed that. The granites can be a little bit more temperamental, especially with their babies. They calm down a little when they get older, but the albinos from the day they're born, they're, they're just super, super chill. Um, this obviously is not an albino. This is a head albino actually, but, and it's possibly green too. Green is patternless, but we won't know if it's, we can't really tell if it's green because it's already leucistic and the leucistic takes away the pattern. So it could be green as well and this was a really nice breeding and this was probably one of the nicest ones i've produced i also have a male that i kept and you've seen him he's a hypo single copy hypo he is visual albino green and granite so he he looks like her except he's just a little bit he's more yellow because he's not white he's not a super hypo he's more of a, a yellowish albino anyway we're going to put her back and we're going to take a look at some really really cool stuff we have here stay tuned <laughs> Look what I see. It is warmed up here in Cape Coral, Florida. It was super cold here the last couple days. I'm talking in the 30s at night. I was really thinking about bringing my olive pythons inside. I said, you know what? I'm not doing it. I left them out here. I showed you videos the last couple days. They were in the hide box. It goes, there's a heat tape that goes, turns on at 60 degrees. They were huddled in there. I was really kind of worried, but I said, you know what? I'm not doing it. I'm not bringing them inside. And I didn't, because I knew it was going to warm up during the day. And I showed you how they bask during the day. Well, it's 4 o'clock. It's basking time. And look what is going on here. Let me see if I can get a good good video feed on this. There's a lock. This is the first time I've ever seen my olive pythons locking. As a matter of fact, I, I didn't even... I, I, I was convinced that they were not male and female, because I've never seen a lock. Although, the, they don't fight, so I knew they weren't males. And I knew my female was probed, so... I knew they were a pair, but I, I just was starting to speculate and, and, and doubt myself. First time, this female's 12 years old, 12 and a half. The male is probably like eight. Look at that. That is a lock for sure. A confirmed lock right there. Never seen it. It's never happened before. I have my olives outside. It was freezing cold the last three days. They endured it. Now it warmed up and look what is going on. We have a lock. Now that doesn't mean we're gonna get eggs, but I've never even seen them lock before ever. So obviously keeping them outside like Tom Crutchfield suggested, the extremes in weather, which obviously we know the olive pythons can handle because they come from a place where it gets cold. 
was exactly what the doctor ordered. That's what they needed. They needed to be shocked. Now, whether the female, you know, builds follicles and, and then ovulates, I don't know. Uh, I, at this point, I'm just super happy to see these guys with each other and doing their thing. And it just makes me think, wow, why did I wait this long? But hey, everything happens when it's supposed to. Will we get a clutch of al albino olive pythons? We'll find out. Super exciting. I wanted to keep you guys updated. All right, I brought my other olive python pair outside now. They've been inside for a few weeks. Let them heal up. You can see her mouth is all healed now. Hopefully she won't continue to rub it on the cage. They both shed, so they look pretty nice. The male albino looks much better. His body had all these like red splotches all over it. You can still see a little sign of them right there, but um, he shed out and he's, he's good to go too. His whole body looks nice and clean. I don't know if it was they were rubbing too much and that's what happened or if they had some kind of bacterial infection, which I treated them for, but they both shed inside and then they both ate. I fed them two days ago uh, a medium rat each, which I usually don't do during breeding season, but these guys are a little on the, on the thinner side. So I figured like, let's throw them something to eat and we'll put them back outside now and see how they do. If they start rubbing again and it starts looking bad, I'll put them back inside. I certainly don't want to lose the pair, but they look really good again, so. And I know these, these guys really like, you know, uh, climbing on the branches and everything like that. You can see already, I just put them in there and they're already climbing, so. We'll give them another shot. All right, Pablo just changed the water bowl. He's got to leave early today and uh, we'll get these guys in. All right, a little update on our Green tree pythons. These are our Aru green tree pythons. We still have seven of them. They're doing great. Uh, they, I don't think they've shed yet, have they, Pablo? No. Not yet. I'm expecting to see some sheds shortly, probably. And after that, we'll we try to feed them a little bit. They really weren't too interested. I think they they have a pretty nice amount of yolk in them from the yolk sac that they in uh, that they absorbed. That'll hold them for usually a couple weeks. I don't usually feed my snakes for two, three weeks sometimes after they hatch. You know, I've never done green tree pythons, and I know a lot of people like to say, say you gotta get them started, because if you don't, you know, they can go downhill quickly, so. But these guys have some pretty decent size in them, so I don't mind waiting till they actually shed, and then we'll we'll offer them some, some pinkies, and hopefully they'll leave. They, they look really good, I mean, they're starting to get, I think their eyes are a little blurry. I think they're gonna go into, uh, I think they're going into a shed cycle here, which is kinda cool. I'll keep you updated. Oh, here's a really nice IMG Sharp Sun Glow. It's a hypo albino with the IMG gene in it. Obviously, it'll never turn black because the albino takes out the melanin in the black, but you'll see more intense patterning. She's amazing. She's, she's about almost three years old. She got really good size in her. I was thinking about breeding her this year, and I'm like, you know what? I don't really have anyone I really want to breed to her yet. Nothing, you know, that I'm absolutely want to see yet with her so I'm, I'm gonna give her another year i'm not in a rush I'm, I'm just thinking about who i want to really put with her and um, i haven't decided yet so i'm like we'll just put another year of size on look at that beautiful red eye oh my god she's right after they shed they just look so pristine it's like you get a brand new snake every time they they drop their shed and we'll leave her alone and let her just chill but you can see that this is um, this is more than just an albino. All right, last snake for today. Uh, this was a quick hit. Just wanted to show you those olive pythons, really. But we'll threw a few more snakes in there. This is a hypo Honduran T positive onyx. So that's a sun glow or T positive sun glow onyx of the uh, Honduran locality, which we know are the smallest boas out there, at least that I know of. And she is also. 66% head blood and 66% head annery too. So a lot of potential here. I just, I kept her back because I really loved the way she looked and she had some great patterns. She's about two and a half years old and you can see, look at my hand, she's tiny. These Honduran boas stay really small. That Onyx gene and the Honduran T positive, they're just small, small snakes. They don't get big. Even the, the, the breeding females are not big. Occasionally you get one that's a little on the bigger side, maybe the size of a bull python, but most of them are not. 
I'll show you one more girl that we, you know, to remind you that we bred, that gave birth this past year, and she was teeny tiny. But love this girl. Wanted to just give you an update on her. All right, this is the uh, the girl I wanted to show you. This is the mama who gave birth this past year. She is also a, well, not also. She's a what we call sumaton. She's a motley onyx. So we we call it sumaton. Look, it's a super form of the motley onyx together. Uh, but it's really not, it's not, they're not allelic, they just interact with each other. So when you have one copy of Onyx, one copy of Motley, you get this like striped animal. She's also Honduran T positive, and that's why she's so light. So she's a T positive. And once again, all Honduran, pure Honduran locality here. And you can see, I'll put my hand on her, look at her. This girl had five babies, <laughs> five live boa babies at that size. You can see she's tiny and she's, you know how old she is? You wouldn't even believe it. She's eight years old. That's how tiny she is. And she eats, she eats. She, and she's definitely not like, she doesn't starve herself. She'll eat a medium rat, you know, every other week. But she, well, they just don't grow. They're, they're super dwarfs. I, you know, I, I make this, I say this all the time, but there really is certain localities of boas that if you keep them pure, the Honduran specifically, they stay small. You know, a lot of people don't realize the Hog Island boas, that's a that's a, an island off of Honduras. Hondur so it doesn't shouldn't be surprising that they're small boas too. So now granted they're an island species, so they gotta kind of get isolated there and they they're much, much smaller, but I, I don't think that the I think the Hog Islands get bigger than this. So teeny tiny super dwarf boas, really cool. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Gave you a little peek of this and that. Really, I wanted to just show you those albino owl pythons and the head albino owl python that they're breeding finally. Unbelievable. You know, it's, it was an experiment and it, it was very risky and I was very nervous doing it. Putting Number one, putting snakes outside, period. Just because there's a lot of unknown variables out here. And then secondly, keeping them outside when it got really cold. That was a very scary proposition. I know other people have said that too, but this is, we're talking 30s. These snakes were, were fine. And when it was like 60 degrees, these snakes are out and they're moving around. It's crazy. So these Australian, you know, olive pythons can handle cold weather and they actually like it. And it obviously seems to stimulate breeding behavior. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to get a clutch of eggs and it doesn't mean the eggs are going to get the hatch, even if I do get them. But it's showing me that I'm doing the right thing now. If everything works out and we get a clutch of eggs and the eggs hatch and we have babies, that's great. And I'll be I'll be the first person to say, man, was I wrong. <laughs> Look, I'm learning. I'm constantly learning. And you know, Tom Crutchfield's taught me a lot of great things. And the truth of the matter is that it's hard to get things, you know, cold enough here in Florida when you keep them indoors because there's a certain level of insulation with the where you're keeping them. Um, I don't have them in my garage where I can keep the doors open. You know, I was, they were inside, you know, so now they're outside and they have a lot of more room to move around and they're more naturalistic and they feel comfortable and their, their whole personality has changed. And you know what? Maybe that's what they needed. Maybe it's not just the cold weather. Maybe it's the whole environmental change, the sunlight, the fact that they can move around that now makes them feel more comfortable where they are. And once again, I'm going to keep you guys updated. As, the, as things progress, because like I said, this is only one lock, but it is encouraging. All right, guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.